Survey Research, Chapter 9, Business Research Methods. So after studying this chapter, we're going to be able to define surveys and explain their advantages, describe the type of information that may be gathered in a survey, identify sources of error in survey research, distinguish among the various categories of survey, and discuss the importance of survey research to total quality management programs. So the opening we net the chapter is about media phones. So what's next in the world of electronic communication? Just in a few years we've seen cell phones move from simple devices to talk with someone to smartphones like Apple's iPhones and Android's phones, which serve as portable music and video players with the ability to download music and movies as well as watch television. Uh, we keep our calendars and all our contact information in our smartphones. Uh, but during the same time, uh, our in-home phones have advanced a little. And this may change, like uh, uh, based on the research conducted by INSTAT. They claim that the leading provider uh, of actionable research market analysis and forecast of advanced communication service infrastructure and end users devices and semiconductors so this is instead so um, they said that while you may never heard about the term media phone you could very well have one in the next few years so uh, media phones a new category of broadband multimedia devices with a potential to become a fourth screen in your home, complementing your PC, TV, and your mobile handset. So these media phones will deliver direct access to internet-based entertainment and application using a large color touchscreen display with high-quality speaker phones. So they will combine the power of a PC with the always-on functionality on the home phone. So both of them. And um, in stat research, they found that the most popular consumer internet activities, including viewing online information services, news, updates, uh, weather forecasts, uh, um, all of them accessing entertainment like YouTube and other movie uh, websites, uh, these media phones offer always on one touch access to all this popular content. So, um, uh, the INSTAT conducted an extensive survey research to learn about the consumer perception, the attitude, and the desires regarding these media phones. And uh, as well, they surveyed uh, obviously significant benefits for electronic manufacturers. Not only will this research help uh, with product design and development, but as well with production planning, pricing, promotion, and distributions of, um, of this new product. So, uh, introduction about surveys. And the purpose of a survey research is to collect primary data data gathered and assembled specifically for the project um, at hand. Um, we'll discuss typical research objective that may be accomplished with surveys and then different advantages of the survey method um, in, um, in this case. Often research entails asking people who are called respondents to provide answers to written or spoken questions. These interviews or questionnaires collect data through the mail, on the phone, online, or even face-to-face. -face. So a survey is defined as a method of collecting primary data based on communication with a representative sample of individuals. Surveys provide a snapshot at a given point in time. So the more formal term, sample survey, uh, emphasized that the purpose of contacting respondents is to obtain a representative sample or subset of the target population. Using the surveys. The type of information gathered in surveys varies considerably depending on the objective. Typically, surveys attempt to describe what is happening or to learn the reason for a particular business activities. Um, identifying characteristics of a target market, measuring the customer attitude and describing consumer purchase pattern are all common business research objectives. Most business surveys have different um, or multiple objectives. 
if you gather only a single type of factual information. So um, uh, even in the example with Instat, they ask questions about the product, the desirable feature that can help with the product development and the advertising message. Uh, geographic and demographics as well, media exposure information, all can be collected um, in order to help plan a market segmentation strategy. Because most survey research is descriptive research, the term survey is most often associated with quantitative findings. Although most surveys are conducted to quantify certain factual information, some aspects of survey may be as well qualitative. Um, in new product development, a survey often has a qualitative objective of refining product concepts. Stylistic, aesthetic, or functional changes may be made on the basis of respondent suggestions. Uh, as well, we can even gather qualitative information regarding activities that could be make the company more green. Advantages of surveys. Surveys provide a quick, inexpensive, efficient and accurate mean of assessing information about the population. Um, the growth of survey research is related to the simple idea that to find out what someone thinks, you need to ask them. And over the last 50, 60 years, and particularly during the last two decades, survey research techniques and standards have become quite scientific and accurate. And when properly conducted, surveys offer managers many advantages. However, they can as well be used poorly when researchers do not follow research principles, such as care for survey and sample design. Sometimes even a well-designed and carefully executed survey is not helpful because the results are delivered too late to inform uh, the decision. So the disadvantages of specific form of survey data collection, personal interview, phone, mail, internet, and uh, other self-administered format. So, however, these errors are common to all forms of surveys, so uh, that's why it's appropriate to describe them uh, generally. In this example, Intuit gets answered to satisfy customers. So, Intuit is the maker of Quicken, QuickBooks, and TurboTax software for accounting and tax preparation, and they enjoy years of growth and profit, takes in part to efforts to learn what the customer wants. So, um, the observer learned that significant number of small businesses were struggling with accounting, uh, know-how, and they need to use QuickBooks, and they were mystified by the term such accounts payable and accounts receivable. So for even more in-depth information, they supplement the survey research with direct observation of the customers. So um, this, um, this research illustrates Intuit reliance on survey research to enhance product and monitor customer satisfaction and loyalty, but as well to show a close relationship between qualitative and quantitative research. Um, qualitative research is often used in exploratory business research to set the stage for quantitative research, such as surveys. And qualitative research can be as well used to provide richer information to bring quantitative research numbers to life. And this Intuit uh, recognized the value of both research approaches. Errors in survey research. A manager who is evaluating the quality of a survey must estimate its accuracy as well. And here we can see various forms of survey error. There are two major sources, random sampling error and systematic error. The first one, a random sampling error. Most surveys try to portray a representative cross-section of a particular target population. Even with technical proper random probability sample, statistical error will occur because the chance of variation in the elements selected for the sample. These statistical problems are unavoidable without very large sample, more than 400. However, the extent of random sampling error can be estimated. Systematic error. The other major source of survey error, systematic errors, the result from some imperfect aspects of the research design or from a mistake in the execution of the research. 
because systematic errors include all sources of errors other than those introduced by the random sampling procedure, this error or biases are called non-sampling errors. A sample bias exists when the results of a sample show a persistent tendency to deviate in one direction from the true value of the population parameter. The many sources of errors that in some way systematically influence answers can be divided into two general categories, respondent error and administrative error. Overestimating patient satisfaction. When companies conduct survey to learn about customer satisfaction, they face an important challenge. Do the responses represent a cross-section of customers? Maybe just the happiest or the most angry customer participate? This problem as well occurs when the customers are the patients of a healthcare provider, like in this example. And a group of researchers in Massachusetts studied the data from patient satisfaction surveys. Uh, the researchers compared the information about response rates with a set of simulated data for which they knew the underlying distribution of responses. They found that the actual data closely matched the simulated data in which responses were biased so that the responses were more likely when satisfaction was higher. So the researchers concluded that there was a significant correlation between the response rate and average, the mean, and the satisfaction rating. Uh, in other words, um, more satisfied patients were more likely to complete and return the surveys. Um, it would as well um, have less information about lower performing doctors. The researchers concluded that it is important to follow up with subjects to encourage greater response rate from less satisfied patients. Respondent error. Surveys ask people for answers. If people cooperate and give truthful answers, a survey will likely accomplish its goal. If the conditions are not met, non-response error or response bias, the two major categories of respondent error may cause uh, sample bias. Non-response error, um, few surveys have 100% response rate. In fact, surveys with relatively low response rate may still accurately reflect the population of interest. However, a researcher who obtained a 1% response to a five-page email questionnaire um, concerning various brands of uh, plugs may face a serious problem. Um, the statistical difference between a survey that includes only those who responded and the survey that also includes those who fail to respond are referred to non-response error. So this problem is especially acute in mail and internet surveys, but responses as well threaten phones and face-to-face -face interviews. People who are not contacted or who refuse to cooperate are called non-respondents. A non-response occurred if no one answered the phone at the time of both the initial call and any subsequent callbacks. The number of no contacts in the phone survey research has been increasing because of the proliferation of answering machines and growing use of caller ID on your uh, screen phones. So the respondent who is not at home when called or visited should be scheduled to be interviewed in a different uh, time of the day or a different day of the week. Refusals. Refusals occur when people are unwilling to participate in the research. A parent who must juggle the phone and the uh, child and refuse to participate in the survey because he or she is too busy uh, also is a non-response. So after receiving a refusal from a potential respondent, an interviewer can do nothing uh, other than, than to be polite. With a mail survey, the researcher never really knows whether a non-respondent actually received the survey, has refused to participate, or is just indifferent. Researchers know that those who uh, are more involved in an issue are more likely to respond to a mail survey. So self-selection bias is a problem that frequently plagues self-administered questionnaires. And comparing um, self-selection biases distort surveys because they over-represent extreme positions while under-representing responses from those who are indifferent. 
Several techniques we're going to see later how to encourage respondents to reply on email on internet surveys. Response bias. A response bias occurs where respondents tend to answer questions with a certain slant. People may consciously or unconsciously misrepresent the truth. If a distortion of measurement occurs because respondent answer are, answers are falsified or misrepresented, either intentionally or inadvertently, the resulting sample bias will be a response bias. When researchers identify bias, they should include a corrective measure. Occasionally, people deliberately give false answer. It's difficult to assess why people knowingly misrepresent answers. A response bias may occur when people misrepresent answers to appear intelligent, conceal personal information, avoid embarrassment, and so on. Uh, one explanation for conscious and deliberate misrepresentation of facts is the so-called average person hypothesis. Individuals may prefer to be viewed as average, so they alter their responses to conform more closely to their perception of the average person. And average person effects have been found in response to questions about such topics as saving accounts balances, car pricing, uh, voting behavior, even hospital stays. Unconscious misrepresentation. Even when a respondent is consciously trying to be truthful and cooperative, response bias can arise from the question format, the question content or, the other, or some other stimulus. Respondents who misunderstand questions may be unconsciously provide biased answers, or they may be willing to answer but unable to do so because they have forgotten the exact details. Um, a bias may occur when a respondent has not thought about an unexpected questions. Many respondents will answer questions even though they have given them little thought. Uh, in many cases, consumers cannot adequately express their feelings in words. They, the, the cause may be questions that are vague or ambiguous. Uh, researchers may ask someone uh, to, to, to describe something related to computers and then the, uh, some specific software, but then the respondent uh, doesn't know how to respond, doesn't know the specific computer language in order to respond, and uh, this is the source of misunderstanding. At the time, as the time following a purchase or a shopping event increases, people become more likely to under-report information about that event. Time lapse influence people's ability to precisely remember and communicate uh, specific uh, specific factors. Types of response bias. A response bias falls into four specific categories: um, acquiescence bias, extremity bias, interviewer bias, and social desirability bias. These categories overlap and are not mutually exclusive. A single biased answer may be distorted for many complex reasons, some, distorting, uh, some distortions being deliberate and some being unconscious misrepresentation. The acquaintance bias, some respondents are very agreeable. They seem to agree to practically every statement they are asked about. A tendency to agree or disagree with all or most questions is known as acquiescence bias. This bias is particularly prominent in new product research. Agreements or disagreements can also be influenced by a respondent's feeling toward the organization identified as conducting or sponsoring the, res the research. Extremity bias. Some individuals tend to use extremes when responding to questions. They may choose only 1 or 10 if it's a 10-point scale. Others consistently refuse to use extreme positions and tend to respond more neutrally. Uh, response styles vary from person to person and extreme responses may cause an extremity bias in the data. Interviewer bias. Response bias may arise from the interplay between interviewer and respondent. If the interviewers present influence respondents to give untrue or modified answers, the survey will be mirrored by interview bias, interviewer bias. 
Um, the interviewer's age, sex, style of dress, tone of voice, facial expressions, and other nonverbal characteristics may have some influence on the respondent answers. If an interviewer smiles and makes a positive statement uh, after the respondent answer, the respondent will be more likely to give similar responses. Uh, many interviewer, contrary to instructions, they shorten or rephrase questions to suit their needs. So this potential influence on responses can be avoided to some extent if interviewers receive uh, training and supervision that emphasize the necessity of appearing neutral. If interviews go too long, respondents may feel that the time is being wasted and they may answer as abruptly as possible with little, uh, with little forethought. Social desirability bias may occur either consciously or unconsciously because the respondent wishes to create a favorable impression or safe face in the presence of an interviewer. Incomes may be inflated, education overstated, or perceived respectable answer uh, given to gain prestige. Um, in, in contrast, answer to questions that seek factual information to responses about matters of public knowledge, uh, the zip code on the number of children, and so on, usually are quite accurate. Uh, an interviewer's presence may increase the respondent's tendency to give inaccurate answers to sensitive questions. Did you vote in the last elections? Uh, do you color your hair? So social desirability bias is especially significant in the case of research that address sensitive or personal topics. Um, Administrative error. The result of improper administration or execution of the research task is called an administrative error. Administrative errors are caused by carelessness, confusion, neglect, omission, or some other blunder. There are four types of administrative error. Uh, data processing error, sample selection error, interviewer error, and interviewer cheating. Data processing. Processing data by computer, like any arithmetic or procedural process, is subject to error because data must be edited, coded, and entered into the computer by people. <clears throat> the accuracy of data processed by computer depends on correct data entry and programming. So data processing error can be minimized by establishing careful procedures for verifying each step in the data processing stage. Sample selection error. Many kinds of error involve failure to select a representative sample. Sample selection error is a systematic error that results in an unrepresentative sample because of an error in either the sample design or the execution of the sample procedure. Executing a sampling plan free of procedural error is difficult. Interviewer error. Interviewer's ability vary considerably. Interviewer error is introduced when interviewers record answers but check the wrong response or are unable to write fast enough um, to record answer verbatim. Uh, selective perception may cause interviewer to misrecord data that do not support their own attitudes and opinion. An interviewer cheating occurs when an interviewer falsified entire questionnaires or files an answer to questions that have been intentionally skipped. Some interviewers cheat to finish the interview as quickly as possible or to avoid questions about sensitive topics. Often interviewers are paid to complete surveys so you can see the motivation to complete a survey that is left with some um, uh, questions unanswered. If interviewers are suspecting or faking questionnaires, they should be told that a small percentage of respondents will be called back to confirm whether the initial interview was actually conducted. So this practice should discourage interviewers from cheating. Uh, the term curb stoning is sometimes used to refer to interviewers filling uh, in responses for respondents that do not really exist. Classifying survey research methods. Now we've introduced some advantages and disadvantages of survey in general. We're going to discuss of the classification of survey according to several criteria. 
and surveys may be classified based on the method of communication, the degrees of structure and disguise in the questionnaire, and the time frame in which the data is gathered. Um, structured, unstructured, and disguised, undisguised questionnaires. In designing a questionnaire or an interview schedule, the researcher must decide how much structure or standardization is needed. A structured question limits the number of allowable responses. Uh, for example, the respondent may be instructed to choose one alternative responses, such as uh, under 18, 18 to 35, and over 35, in order to indicate age. An unstructured question does not restrict the respondent's answer. An open-ended, unstructured question, such as why do you shop at Walmart, it will allow the respondent considerable freedom in answering. The researcher must as well decide whether to use undisguised questions or disguised questions. A straightforward or undisguised question, um, such as uh, do you have dendruff problem, assumes that the respondent is willing to reveal the information. However, researchers know that some questions are threatening to a person's ego, prestige, or self-concept, so they have designed a number of indirect techniques uh, of questioning the disguise, um, uh, questioning in order to disguise the purpose of the study. The mere measurement effect. Will you eat high-fat food this week? Will you floss your teeth? Researchers have found that answering survey questions like these can actually shift your behavior. This influence called the mere measure effect means that simply answering a question about intentions will increase the likelihood of an underlying behavior if the behavior is seen as socially desirable. So if the behavior is considered undesirable, answering the questions tend to decrease the likelihood of the behavior. So, uh, the researchers propose that the mere measurement effect occurs because subject of a survey uh, generally do not think the questions are an attempt to persuade them. If they perceive information that puts them on the, their guard against persuasion, the, the mere measurement effect is lessened and sometimes even generates the opposite behavior. Their results suggest a need for caution when survey attempt to predict future behavior. Temporal classification most surveys are for individual research projects conducted only once over a short period of time. Other projects require multiple surveys over a long period. So the surveys can be classified on a temporal basis. So cross-sectional study um, uh, is, is collecting data at a single point in time. Um, People are asked to reflect on their past behavior rather than ask them if they made um, a resolution and they follow up a year later to see if the resolution was kept. So such studies sample a various segment of the population to investigate the relationship among variables by cross tabulations. Most business research surveys fall into this category. We can think of cross-sectional studies as taking a snapshot of the current situation. A typical method of analyzing a cross-sectional survey is to divide the sample into appropriate subgroups. The next one, longitudinal studies. In a longitudinal study, respondents are questioned at multiple points in time. The purpose of longitudinal studies is to examine the continuity of responses and to observe changes that occur over, um, over time. Um, in applied business research, a longitudinal study that uses successive temp samples is called tracking study because successive ways are designed to compare trends and then identify challenges in variables such as consumer satisfaction, brand image, or advertising awareness. And these studies are useful, to assess, uh, are useful for assessing aggregate trends, but do not allow for tracking changes um, in, in individuals over time. Uh, conducting surveys in waves with two or more sample groups avoid the problem of response bias resulting from a prior interview. 
Consumer panel. A longitudinal study that gathers data from the same sample of individuals or households over time is called a consumer panel. Uh, a consumer panel that consists of a group of people who record their purchasing habits on, in, on a diary over time will provide the manager with continuous stream of information about the brand and the product class. Uh, panel members may be contacted by phone, in a personal interview, by mail questionnaire, or by email. Uh, typically, respondents they complete media exposure and uh, or purchase diaries and mail them back to the survey organization. And if the panel members agree to field test new product, then face-to-face -face or phone interviews may be required. Uh, the nature of the problem dictates with communicating uh, methods to be used. This is a longitudinal research from, from a Harris pool. And next one is total quality management and customer satisfaction. Total quality management is a business strategy that emphasizes market-driven quality as a top priority. Total quality management involves implementing and adjusting the firm's business activity to assure customer satisfaction with the quality of goods and services. Well, what is quality? What is quality? quality organization used to define quality by engineering standards. Uh, most companies no longer see quality that way. Some managers say that having a quality product means that the good or service conforms to consumer requirements and that the product is acceptable. Effective executives who subscribe to a total quality management philosophy, however, believe that the product's quality must go beyond acceptability for a given price range. Rather than merely being relieved that nothing went wrong, consumers should experience some delightful surprises or reap some uh, unexpected benefits. So quality assurance is more than just meeting the minimum standard. The level of quality is the degree to which a good or service truly is seen as good or bad. Organiz internal and external customers, organizations that have adopted the total quality management philosophy, believe that the focus on customers must be included more than external customers. They believe that everyone in the organization has customers and that the development of sound, comprehensive customer relationship is a key factor to business success. Total quality management programs work most effectively when every employee knows exactly who his or her customers are and what output internal and external customers expect. Um, as well, it's important to know how customer perceives their need uh, are being met. Too often, differences between perception and reality are not understood. Implementing total quality management. Uh, implementing a total quality management program requires considerable uh, survey research. A company must routinely ask customers to rate it against competitors, and it must periodically measure employees' knowledge, attitudes, and expectations. It must monitor companies' performance against benchmark standards, must determine whether customers found and delightfully surprised or major disappointment. Uh, in other words, a total quality management strategy expresses the convictions that to improve quality, an organization must regularly conduct survey to evaluate quality improvements. Tracking quality improvement, there are four stages. Stage one, commitment and exploration stage. Management makes a commitment to total quality assurance. Stage two, benchmarking. Research establish quantitative measures as benchmark or points of comparison. Stage three, initial quality improvement. Uh, and stage four, uh, continuous quality improvement that consists of many consecutive waves with the same purpose to improve the previous periods. 
and here are the stages uh, all all together in the same um, in the same graph. She has shows the total quality management programs that measures performance against customer standards, not against standards determined by quality engineers within the companies. And all changes within the organizations are oriented towards improvement of customers' perceptions and quality. That was today's chapter. Thank you so much.